Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. We are making the Basically Amazing Printable Scrapbook Album Size C and this is where we've gotten so far. We did, in the last video, we did this uh, page set up here on the first page. So we've got a, a flip out pocket page here, we've got a flip out pocket corner, we've got a pocket corner here, and then we've got this uh, set up right there. And that's as far as we go. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and mat these pages and we're also gonna add some inserts into these pages. So these templates are uh, available in my Etsy shop. There is a link down below. We are currently, for this album, we are using the text and the grungy wood. Um, if you're following along with me, if not, use whatever you like, but that's the ones, the two backgrounds that I'm using. Um, when I made my mock-up, my prototype, this big guy right here, this is, um, this is actually too, this is the Darcel paper collection. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. This is the paper collection we're using. This one is by Prima. And so this is my prototype. So this is the one we're kind of following, but I've tweaked it a little bit. So if you want to see a flip through of the mock-up, um, I have a specific uh, video where I did a flip through of all four sizes. So this is size C. Um, we've already done an album in size D, and that was a Christmas album, and I love that. It turned out so wonderful. Uh, but anyway, if you want to see the video of all the flip throughs of the mock-ups, I will link that up here and down below. But there is also a specific playlist for this exact album that we are currently making. So it's it, it, it will also be linked up here and down below. So if you want to start from the beginning, there is an introduction to the templates. There is a uh, the flip through of the prototypes, there is a uh, introduction to the add-on photo mats, there is uh, what we're going to be using during this uh, album, then there is making the cover and the binding, and then the last one is the adding the set of pages to the first fin. Okay, so this is, uh, I don't know, the fifth or sixth video, this might be the sixth video. But anyway, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you do not miss any of the videos, I go step by step um, and I go in order. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and then turn those notifications on and then you won't miss any of the videos when I upload them. There's also a special Amazon list specifically for this album. So anything that I use the best I can, I'll link there. And any other things I mention or any videos I mention will be in the description box, which is if you're on the computer, it says show more. And then you hit that and a whole big thing drops down. And then if you're on your phone, it's probably just a little arrow. So it's right, the show more is right under the title and the arrow is like right next to the title. It's really tiny, but it's there. So if you hit that, a whole thingy drops down. Okay, so one of the first things I like to do when I get started on a new album is um, whatever paper collection I'm using, I like to go through and just pull out two of each page if they're double-sided so i go and i tear out two of each page so i have one for this and then i have one for that so i go through and do every design that way um i'm going to tear one of each page out so i'm going to do that real quick and then i'll be right back sorry about that i had to change my battery um in last video, I pointed out that you really can't get the 12 by 12 anymore, but you can get the single sheets, and the single sheets do have uh, foil on them, and I had bought some of the single sheets when I first ordered the collection. I actually used the ones with the foil on my covers, so um, that's something to keep in mind, too. I don't think I used that one. What did I use? I used this one. I used these on the covers. I think it was this one. I'm pretty sure. It's nice to already have, like, a mock-up, a prototype that you can follow. <laughs> um... But anyway, so if you can't get a hold of the 12 by 12 paper pack, get you some singles. Because, you know, if you get two of each single, or maybe um, maybe your favorite pattern, you get maybe four or five of each single. And that way you have them. So that's what I like to do. I like to start off by pulling two of every page out because, uh, well, one of each design. So in this case, it's two of this page because the back side is the pink. So that way I go through and I use all of each one before I repeat myself. Am I making sense? I hope I'm making sense. Um, and, and I usually typically like to pull out what I want for my covers, but since I know what I want for my covers, um, I have not, I have not done that. So, so anyway, so one of the things I know I'm going to do is I'm going to print an envelope from my vintage envelopes and inserts. 
So that's this set of templates. There are three sets. So I'm, I know 100% for certain I'm gonna use set number one and I may use set number three, but I don't know 100% yet on that, but I know I'm gonna be using set number one. So um, these are available on Etsy, Etsy shop and they are linked down below. So I know I'm gonna be using an envelope and I thought about using this paper here as the envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. And then I think I want to use the envelope here. So I want it to be tucked into this spot right here. So I think that's what I'm going to use the envelope. I'm going to put the envelope there and then I'm going to mat this side with the pink. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that. And then on the front here, I know I want the blue. So I'm pretty sure it's this one, this page here. I'm going to mat the front with that right there. So let's start there. Let's start there. So I'm going to mat the front and back of this, and then I'm going to print off the envelope. So I'm going to trace. I'm going to trace these two because I don't need the other part that's on that page. So that would be the um, what I need for this to trace this is actually page 57D, so it is the mat for the main base page. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this. Let me move the rest of these out of the way. Do I need these? Not right now. Yeah, so I'm gonna trace this, uh, both of these. I'm gonna trace it out of my sheet here. What's nice about tracing it is you can place it exactly where you want it. I broke my pencil lid. So there's one, and then I'm going to trace this one. It's on the back side of here. I don't even look. No, okay. And then I'm going to trace this. And right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this barcode off, or this um, top part, so that it'll fit in my paper trimmer better. So I'm gonna, first, I'm going to cut the long side here less waste and then I'm going to cut the top off put that in my drawer so there's that piece Right? Okay, so these two pieces, I'm going to put them in my Crafted Companion tray. This is the, um, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just have them all together. I was thinking about separating the pattern paper with the solids, but I think I'm just gonna leave it all together for now. And if you wanna learn how to make that, that is my Crafty Companion. I will link a playlist up here and down below to the entire Crafty Companion. Um, every video that I ever made for the Crafty Companion it is in that list. So if you wanna see how to make that, um, feel free to check that out. It's also available at my Etsy shop, the templates are. So I'm gonna stick these over here, my paper collection part. Do I want to go ahead and ink these up? I mean, I know what I'm, I know where I'm putting them because, again, I've already got my mock-up prototype, and I'm pretty much closely following that, but adding some things. So I'm just going to go ahead, ink these two up. I am using the Distress Oxide in Walnut Stain. I need to get a new sponge because mine is shedding again. Okay, 
can't really see it much on this really dark, 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 dark paper, but um, it does finish it off nicely. So here's where they're going to go. So this one's going to go here, just like that. And then this one is going to go here. Oops, that's upside down. This one's going to go here. So I am going to go ahead and attach these down. I think I'm going to go ahead I'm just going to use my tape runner. I'm going to attach them down. This is such a big book, you guys. I hope you guys can see. So I'm going to run along the edges. You could use liquid glue if you would like. Use, what you, use your favorite glue. I just happen to like using my tape runner these days, especially since I have found that great resource for tape refills, because that stuff is expensive. Don't forget our magnet is right there. Whoop. There we go. So then I'm just going to go ahead and... I did not center this perfectly. That's okay. Look, it's kind of short. Oh well. So I'm going to go ahead and place that down. I'm going to burnish it just a little bit. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do this side. Wow. Do you guys like using the tape runners? Some of them are super expensive. Like some of the smaller individual ones, I think they're super expensive. But if you can get, I'm gonna go ahead and put some down the middle too. If you can get a good price on them, on the tape refills on this, you're, it's a good deal. I like them. Okay, so I'm gonna, up oh, that off just a little bit there. There we go. And it's still crooked. But again, that's okay. Look, ink fixes it right up. And when I can't get my head over top of things, it's very annoying. All right, so that's going to go there like that. I love, 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 love. Okay, so then here, I want, let me put this up before I lose it. So I have printed off um, the first envelope. So this is set number one, and this is 1A. So I printed off set number one, I mean, 1A, I printed it off onto patterned paper. So, what I did was, here's my large cutoff piece and my small cutoff piece, and I'm pretty sure it went like this. Okay, so I cut it at eight and a half, and then I cut it at 11. So that's where, what the, and it's got the pink on the back, right? So that is these pieces. There are some templates in this set of templates that um, were designed specifically to be used with these large and small cutoff pieces. So keep them separate. So these pages are from my scrapper keeper. Oh, right. I did make this. I did actually make this exact one on video because this one I made for my mom. So it's now mine. So this is my scrapper keeper. And, um, you can see that the pages, they come in and out. So look at all the different background design pages. Um, I do keep them in here. So I grabbed me a new one and I have a video. If I have room, I'll link it up here. If not, it'll just be in the description box. So I keep all of those pieces separate because some of the templates are made specifically for those pieces. All right, so I've got that. So page 1A in set number one, vintage envelopes set number one. I printed onto patterned paper. And then I printed 2A. This is on coffee uh, and tea stained paper. If you don't want to do your own, I have a link down below to Etsy. There's a lot of great Etsy sellers. This is the first time I actually sent this paper through my Epson, my inkjet printer. And it kind of struggled a minute, but it, it did just fine. So I'm going to be using one of these. So this is page 2A, right? And then the two inserts that I picked, I picked page 3A. I printed that onto white cardstock because I'm going to have that separate. It's not going to be inside the envelope, but I'm going to have that in the pocket. And then page 4A, 
I just print it onto regular old copy paper. Copy, you know, like the thin, cheap stuff. Um, cause this is going inside the envelope and this is just be a great place cause it's lined. You see, it'll just be a great place to journal about all the different pictures that we're going to end up putting in this album. So that is the envelope that I chose out of the vintage, printable vintage envelopes and inserts set number one. Again, I'll have this specifically linked down below. So we're going to put that envelope in this pocket. So let's get to cutting here. Let's do, let's do this part first. I think I'm just going to use my scissors, maybe. I'm going to keep all my scraps. All right, I'm going to be keeping all of these scraps because you just never know when you might need a little bit of something. Okay. Also, I suggest that you, if your printer, if you don't know your printer super, super, super well, let me go get you the test printer page I did. If you have a, a printer that has a single slot, um, what I would suggest, this says Epson single slot, and I put an arrow. So what I did was I made sure when I loaded that into the single paper slot, um, I loaded it in this way, and I wanted to see which way it was gonna print because my printers all print differently. So I wanted to make sure if I'm printing onto pattern paper that it prints the way I want it to print. So you may wanna do that too, and I've been leaving it over there by the printer just in case um, I forget, and that way I'll have an easy reference. So it's just a good thing to do to save, um, to save yourself from wasting any of your pretty pattern paper. Just a little tip there, just a little tidbit. Okay. Alrighty. So we got that. And then I want one of these. So again, I'm just going to use my scissors here. Then I'm gonna put this with all the other things I've got printed out already that I can use. What's been stopping me here? Okay, so then I'm gonna finish trimming this out really quick. Yeah, I can see the black ink from my inkjet, and that's okay. It doesn't bother me, not one bit. All right, and then the, in the see, this one I think, I'm actually gonna trim this out with my paper trimmer. And I think I'm gonna trim it into two pieces. It's meant to be like folded in half, but I think I'm gonna have it as two pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it out all the way around first. And then I'm just gonna trim it in two pieces. I might only use one of these as an insert, or maybe I'll use both, I don't know. Um, and then this one, I think I'm gonna trim out top to bottom, or I might just trim out one really quick. Let me move this out of the way. Because then what I want you to do is I want you to fold it in half, matching up that bottom, or whichever one you trimmed. Match up that piece. Did I do okay? So then you can cut this out as a whole versus um, versus cutting it out and then trying to fold it and match it that way. Let's see how good we did. Eh, not too bad. Too bad at all. Okay, so for this piece, I'm not sure if I'm gonna glue it together yet or not, but I am gonna round the edges. You don't have to. If you don't have a, a corner rounder thingy, then you can just use your scissors. But since I have them, this is a We Are Memory Keepers 
I'm going to do the half inch and round those corners. And I think that might be the only one that gets rounded on the inserts. And I didn't grab another package for these taller pieces. So I'm going to just stick this in the front here. I've got a little front pocket because um, I don't want to lose that because I might be able to use that for something. I didn't grab it like a, I have one that's like full, like it's like a full. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, let's start with, let's go ahead and score this. This is a We Are Memory Keepers a scoreboard. We're going to score the envelope. And let's score this. See how crooked it pulled it in? It doesn't matter. It'd be fine. You know, if you just match up the lines on your scoreboard with the line on your printout, you will be just fine. I probably should have picked a less wrinkly piece of coffee stained paper. But that's okay. Okay, so this is going to be folded like this. And then this is going to be attached to the front there. I need to add some tape to this. I feel like I didn't score that very heavily. It's just skinny, skinny, skinny. All right, so let me add some tape. This big long one here, I'm gonna use the skinny quarter of an inch. This one is from scrapbook.com. You have to forgive me if I don't tell you what something is. Uh, this is my second video today, so I can't, I can't remember if, I need to move those glasses. I keep kicking them. Um, I can't remember if I've said it to you already, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. So, this is like part two of this page. We assembled the page, the pages in the last video, and then now we are making them all purdy. So let's go ahead and put tape on that. That was three-eighths of an inch of tape. Going to chomp these ends and then I'm gonna go straight across there like that and straight across there like that and I'm gonna burnish this down okay so I'm gonna ink this edge real quick in case just in case I got off a little bit All right so I'm going to start with the long edge here and I'm going to match this up to that bottom for that long edge of the envelope, the other part of the envelope. And I'm going to take these side pieces off and we're going to attach it down. Oh, look, I got off. It's okay. Again, it is okay. Let's see if I can match this. Yeah, look at how I got way off. That's okay. What did I say the other day? Perfectly imperfect. Yep, that's what this is. Perfectly imperfect. All right. So I'm going to ink this edge. And I'm going to ink this edge and get rid of that white line there. And I might even do that. Oh, 
All right, so another thing I want to do is I'm going to do a wax seal on this envelope, except I'm not going to seal it down to here. So I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to add a magnet or anything. So let me get a mat. This is just a craft mat that I keep close by for this purpose. Look, there's some wax stuff right there. And then I've got my my candle and I'll pull it over and I got my little bowl for my wax. Look, look at that. <sighs> oh, it's going to melt on too. Let's see, can I scrape this off first? I don't want it to melt into my candle. Okay, we'll put that back in the bowl. Just like that. Looks like I have some leftover from the last time I used it. Doing wax seals is one of my most favorite things to do anymore. I love it. I love the look of it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I have these linked in my Amazon. Come, of course, they come in bazillion colors. I'm just going to put one in there right now, I think, because there's some leftovers. So I'm going to let that heat up. Actually, I think it looks better like this. I could be wrong. I'm going to let that heat up. And then my stamp. I have an H for my last name, but there's roses and things. Um, I probably should have grabbed a rose because, look, there's a rose. Where's my rose? Let me go find my rose. Okay, sorry about that. I went to go look for my thing. My rose stamp. My rose stamp. I found it. Look at. There it is. It's so tiny, though. I went to go look for that, and then I found these. These are number wax seal stamps. Is it going to focus on it or not? Right? So I thought I'd try that, and then my son came home. So <laughs> I used what was in here and did the one. Let's see if I can get it off of here without breaking it. Just to test it out since I had to stop anyway. That's cute. You know, we got this whole number thing going on with this set of templates. Maybe we'll use numbers just because we can. So I'm going to put my rose aside but because I might end up using this on something smaller. So let's go ahead and Re-wet, re-wet, re-melt some wax. I'm going to put two in there. And that'll take a minute. And there's the one. So this one I got at Hobby Lobby. So I probably won't be able to put this in my Amazon list, but you could probably get it at Hobby Lobby. I'll look to see if I can't find it. But it's a zero through nine, which is cool. And then it has like the handle. So yeah, but if you can get it at Hobby Lobby, you can get it half off for $7.50 or whatever, 40% off, whatever it is, coupon. So that's fun. Maybe we'll use numbers in this one. All right, now I need to wait for that to melt. I'm not going to do the rows. I'm not going to do the initial. I guess I could just glue that on there. That's not near as fun. Well, on our way down that to melt, I think I am. I'm going to ink the edges of this insert. Um, I think I'm going to leave it open for now. I don't know. I'm not really sure. And I'm going to go ahead and ink these up. Okay, let me grab this one. Oh. Like it's ready. Okay, so I'm literally just gonna pour this on here, half on, half off, the paper in the in the mat. I've done it before where I have had a magnet in there. So this time you just need to make sure that you're upright if you want people to read your number. All right, so we're gonna let that cool. Let me finish inking this up. Because yeah, I've got a like a oh there's one example of the little baby rose. So yeah, I'll just stick that in there. But if I need it, I've got it. Come on, let it go. Aha! 
perfect. Whoops, that's still wet. Right? So now it'll look like that when it's closed. Isn't that cute? Okay, let's set this aside. Let's move this out of the way. So this insert's gonna go in here. Maybe. Like that. And then this is gonna go in here. Maybe. Right? What's going on? There we go. So that's gonna go there. And then one of these, or maybe both, I don't know, is also gonna go here. Maybe. I wonder. We'll see. We'll see how we end up doing this. Well, let's just go ahead and put them both in there just for now. Okay, this is page 95. This is the mat for these large corners. So I'm gonna cut two, I might even do three, cause I didn't, I hadn't thought about what I wanna put here yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. So I printed it off in the text. So I'm gonna trim this out all the way around. And then I'm gonna separate a couple of them. All right, so I've got four. I went ahead and just cut two sets of them. Oh, this one's really crooked. I didn't do a very good job trimming out, but that's okay. That's okay. That should be my new thing. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just trimming out the little corner pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mat these, right? So I think, but I want to use some of the embellishments. So I'm going to grab one of my crafty trays and I'm going to grab the two sets of embellishments that I have and we're going to put them in here. Just so I can sort through them quickly. There's that. I never did use the stickers in my mock-up from this big one. And I, I still don't think I'm gonna. I kind of want to. I kind of want to. Where's the craft knife? Let me see if I can carefully slice through just one layer of this plastic. Ah! Nope. <laughs> oh, I didn't. That's okay. Go ahead and put all these in here. One thing I know I didn't use is these long strips of things. I tried to figure out something to do, but I just didn't like it. So I'm not even gonna put those in there. Put them back. Okay, so I was thinking about using, in my mock-up I used a floral, which I thought was super pretty. I just don't remember which floral. Which floral did I use? Did I cut it from a paper? No, I used this one. So I thought about using this side, or this one on this side. I think I would like more. Oh, that writing looks too specific. I wonder if that would look good on the back side. Yeah. Maybe I'll put one on the back side too. Right, so we can do this. I'm gonna put this here. So the only thing I don't like about the uh, embellishments is that there's all this white. So I'm gonna cut some of that out. If I can find my scissors. I'm just gonna trim around it just to get rid of some of that white. Actually, 
Yeah, let's just go ahead and trim around it. I guess this way it gives you the option. If you want more white, you leave it. If you don't, you trim it away. That must have been what they were thinking. Right? I know some of them are easier because they're rectangles or squares or circles. So you can get right up to the edge. I'm sure there's a manufacturing issue with all of these delicate, intricate little bits and pieces as well. But you can still see, I'm leaving a bit of, a, a bit of the edge. I'm gonna ink it as well. So now I just need to decide if I want to attach it first and then let's do it like this. Let's move the book. Um, I'm going to have to use liquid glue to attach this down, I think. I'm going to grab our glitter glue. Notice I still have not cleaned out my fine tip. But everything seems to be working just fine, so. All right. So. What do we think? Then I'm just going to cut this off right at the edge there. I wonder if I could use these pieces anywhere else to add color. Right? Why not? <laughs> sure. Alright, so then let's ink those edges. Then this is going to go here. Cute. Cute, right? Oh, I love it. All right, let's go ahead and attach this down. like that. In my mock-up, I used a different paper over here, but I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. All right, well, before I do that, let's just talk about maybe the inserts for this pocket. So, let me move these out of the way. I know I want to do a 4x6 and a 3x4 card. So, I have the journaling cards. These are the 4x6 journaling cards. And I'm going to use the back side of this, I think. I'm going to have this on one of the cards. And then, 
And then, and then, and then, and then, and then. I should do the same thing. I should tear one of each out that, um, that way I can see what I've got. Well, I know exactly which one I want because I've already done it before. Unless I accidentally used them all. How would I do that? Whatever you are, be a good one. That one. Okay. So then what I need is I need the black cardstock for these. So those would be that page. <clears throat> That page is 64D. Why is this page marked? Oh, because I was going to need the mat. Oh, I was going to trace it. I ended up printing them. That's okay. It's fine. So 64BD is the page for the 4x6. And that is actually the mat for 17BD, right? And then, um, where's the other one at? I wrote these down so I wouldn't have to look every time. And then the other one is 68 DE. So that is, that is the mat for page 21 DE. Okay, so we need, you might as well go ahead and just make a bunch of them and have them ready to go. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cut some up really quick. And then I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I did want to show you that if you trace out two of the 64DE and two of the 68DE onto one sheet of black cardstock, you get two of each. So I did want to show you that. Or you could get three of the 64DE, or you could probably get, let's see, one to probably six of the 68DE off of one sheet. So, but that's what I did. I just did two and two. And so these are going to be the mats for these, right? Just like that. And then we're going to put these aside because I don't need them right now. But then I also have, um, for the back side, we're literally just going to use some leftover cardstock. So we're going to use a, see, look, leftover, a strap. That's a three by four. And then here is a four by six. It's the same white cardstock. So this is supposed to represent a photo. Okay. So this is what's going to go on the back side. So first we're going to do is we're going to use our place photo here stamp. And this one is from May May Made It and it's called Action. Um, I don't know. I, just, I haven't checked lately to see if she if they're back in stock, but um, I will. And it, I'll try to put a link down below if they are back in stock. Okay. So we're just literally going to do this really quick. So this is a four by six photo, and this is a three by four photo. And then we're going to ink everything. So let's go ahead and ink these two cards and then our two fake photos. <clears throat> okay, so everything is inked up. I'm going to go ahead and attach these down. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just using my tape runner here, my uh, ATG. This one here it should be about eighth of an inch all the way around ish. And then I'm going to put the place photo here one on the back side. I've got that paper clip on there on that one. There's like an image of a paper clip, so I'm going to use an actual real paper clip to kind of clip these two together. So there's one insert, and then 
Here is the other. Same thing, there should be about an eighth of an inch all the way around. You could round the corners of this black cardstock if you really wanted to. I'm gonna leave it like that because I'm gonna leave the place photo here um, squared off. And you could, if you wanted to, you could write on there three by four, or you can give them, well, with the three by four and the four by six, you don't really have to give them a template for that because those are easy. But I'm gonna grab a paper clip. I've got a whole bunch of them here in my little, one of my little drawers, my crafty trays. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this literally right on, I'm gonna have to do it this way, right on that mark there, <laughs> just cause I think that's kind of cute. And I'm gonna add this one in there. And then this will go right there, maybe. Well, there we go. So that goes right there, right? Super cute. All right, so now we need to do this and these two. I mean, I could do this. And maybe do something across there. Hmm. You know, like a half and half kind of thing. What could I do? What could I do? Some of these things I know I'm using in other spots, but I think what I did, I went ahead and went through and pulled out everything that I knew I'm gonna be using on the different pages because of my, my prototype that I already have made. So I put that in this little envelope. Then I also separated out the ones that are words versus the ones that are images. So that is why I have a lot of these skinnier trays in my workstations. It just feels like it's um, easier to sift through. So I'm gonna put that up and I think I've decided to use this image right here out of the embellishments that I trimmed off the extra already. So what I'm gonna do, and we'll figure out how this is supposed to go. It goes like this. So I'm gonna flip this over this way and I'm gonna attach them together with some tape. It's just temporary for now. And then I'm gonna glue this down to both sides. Where do I wanna put it though? I think I'll glue it down like that. What do you guys think? Do you like? That is way too much glue. What did I just say I was going to do? <laughs> oh God, here, let's glue it down like this. Flip it over, smish. And right, I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute. I think it's dry enough. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tape off the back. Whoop! Whoops! This tape is not supposed to pull the paper off. What? Did I have glue or something on there? Oh no. Well, we'll be more gentle next time, won't we? I pressed too hard. I bet that's why. All right, to cut them in half, I'm gonna grab my cutting mat and my craft knife. And I'm just gonna slice down between Easy, easy. So now they're perfect, perfectly aligned. And I'm gonna ink those edges. All right, and let's go ahead and stick them down before I change my mind. I'm 
removing the tape off of it. Remember my boo-boo? My magnet boo-boo. Well, it wasn't really a boo-boo, but. So this piece is gonna go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this one down. Right here. And then let's attach this one. We're going to match that up. Well, as best we can, anyway. Perfect. Right, I mean, because it's going to be closed like this anyway, so it's not probably going to matter that much. But okay, so we got that, and then here. So I think we're gonna do another place photo here. We're gonna do a four by six there, because remember the D size is meant for a four by six portrait. And the C size is meant for a five by seven portrait. So I think we'll do, oh, I'm gonna have to do some photo corners, because I don't wanna do the uh, printable ones. I just want to do, I just want to put this on here like that with photo corners. So, I know I don't have any, I've got a ton made up, but I don't have any brown ones or enough brown ones. So, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to make some. Let's make some right now. All right. So I've got, I'm going to get a package of photo corners. These are from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to grab a craft mat. Oh, Lordy. That's a crazy looking craft mat. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them. So that way I know they match. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to wet them or not. So you only get four sheets in one package, just so you know. But this is what the package looks like. And they're a really good deal, I think. So they're like a dollar a sheet. So I think, I think I'm just gonna, I need to make a decision, that's what I'm gonna do. I might just ink them up and then maybe spray them. I, I, Cause I have sprayed them with the spray which I like that too, but they get kind of greenish. Yeah, shoot, this might take a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna ink them all up just like this. <laughs> and then I'll come back once I got them all inked. Okay, got them all inked up. I think I'm just gonna leave them like this. I don't think I'm gonna spray them. Not this time. This is supposed to be white. It's a tonic craft mat, by the way. <laughs> I've stained it. It will. All right, so I'm going to put these back in my drawer. I just need one for right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them back in here in my crafty tray. And also, I inked up the place photo here and I picked out a journaling card. The only thing is I need to decide if I want it removable or not. So also I'm going to go ahead and cut these off here because I might use these little pieces here to tape that journaling card down. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. And so I'm going to go ahead and grab one on each corner and this could also just be your photo don't forget that you instead of putting this piece you know place photo here paper you can put your photo there instead <laughs> but if you're giving it as a gift it's perfect to um to do this see it is one of my leftovers or scraps all right i'm gonna 
lay this on here like this. Right? So it looks like that. So then I could use these. Let me go ahead and ink this up. The back's kind of cool too. It's a little plain. But this says, he who wants a rose must respect the thorn. So this is true. I tell my husband that all the time in other words. <laughs> I'm in a mood today. Leave me alone. Leave me be. Alright, because I could. I think I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to use those like as accent pieces. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, you should never throw those away. I'm going to show you another crafty tray that I have that's full of them. Right, because they're just like little pieces of tape almost so you can either do it like this or you can do it on the corners I think I'm going to do it like this and I'm not even going to try to go straight they're just like little stickers and they're not doing any good underneath the underneath the photo in my opinion so it gives like a little a little something something without being too much you know I love that. I love that. I love that. So let me show you my little crafty tray. I have full of them. So all different colors. You don't throw them suckers away. Don't you throw them away. They're good. But I am going to keep these separate because they match. They match what we're doing. So I'm going to keep these actually in a little, a little boat of candle jar my mom painted me. So anytime I cut one off, I'm going to stick it in there. Um... Okay, so where does that leave us here? So let's get this, we got this, we got that. Something is getting caught here. It's getting on my nerves. So it opens up like this, like that. We're not going to do anything with a side pocket insert. We've got this insert, envelope insert. We've got these two. There's an insert inside of there. Hmm, what do we think? What do we think about these inserts? I don't know if I want to leave them in there or not. But you can't really see them. I mean, they'd be great for writing. Hmm. Huh. Well, I'm kind of, I'm not sure. I'm kind of on the fence. And, and this is going to make me mad. So I'm going to have to work that out a little bit. I'm not sure. So I'm going to put these aside for now, I think. Maybe we'll turn them into a tag or something later. All right, so that's the one part. And then it's got a magnet keeping it closed. Which, is it keeping it closed? It better be. Keeping it closed there, and then it opens up to this. Okay, well, I think we're going to stop here. I think we're going to, I think we've done enough for one video. I like it. This is removable. Yep, I like, I like, I like. All right, we're going to stop here, and in the next video, we will do the inside of here. And then we'll just keep moving. Okay, you guys, do let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I mean, this bottom here is going to, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> do let me know what you think down in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you guys next time.